uh, the Become a Coach program is to help a person. So they walk in, they know that they want to help others, but they haven't done anything yet. My goal is to make sure that they see themselves for who they really are before they move forward. So once they walk through this process of who am I, what do I really have to offer, where are my blocks, now they know how they can build their coaching program out. A lot of people skip this. People are just saying, oh, I want to have a program. So I have a deep dive on that. And me being an author of a book called You Got Way More In You, Where Is It? Welcome to the We Got Problems podcast with co-host Curtis G. Martin, Rhonda L. Brown, and Khalif Johnson C. The one and only podcast where solutions get discussed to our community's everyday troubles. Each week, you will hear mind-blowing conversations and actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to become more effective. We got problems and we got solutions. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the show. This is We Got Problems, where we discuss solutions. I'm Curtis G. Martin, and I'm here with my co-host, Rhonda L. Brown. Hey, everybody. I'm here with my other co-host, Khalif Johnson Sr. Peace, y'all. How y'all doing? And we have a special guest in the house today, Coach Tamika James. Hey, Tamika. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead and tell the people a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, so, yeah, I am a life and business coach. I assist those who want to monetize their knowledge. So I help people who are like they have something in their brain. They want to share it with the world and they want to package it up properly. So I help them to do that. And um, but before they actually get to that part, I help them to see themselves. So that is like my main thing. And then I help them to build their course and I help people with social media. And um, I also privately help clients with planning, strategizing and organizing. All right, so cool. yeah, so, that's me in a nutshell. So how did you get started as a life coach and business coach? I got started years ago. i was in the beauty industry since, oh my gosh, I got my license back in 95 and I was supporting others from the very beginning. I was always helping people, even though I was doing hair and it was just something natural for me to just help people. So as time went on, I was in the salon supporting the uh, staff and I was also servicing clients, but I got to a point where I started to become an author and I wrote this book called You Got Way More In You, Where Is It? And I started helping people because in the book, it helps you to see yourself and then to begin to think about like what you want to do next, even though you're not clear on it. Mm -hmm. And I started like giving a book to my clients. And as they were looking at the book, they kept saying, because I wrote it for the beauty community, to be honest. And they were like, it's not just for them. And I realized that I need to at some point stop servicing clients with my hands because I got tired of standing up. And I realized that there was a bigger part of me that really needed to be birthed. So the coach side had to come out and I had to drop the shears. There so that's kind of how it happened. Like I'm doing this already. Let me just make the shift. Yeah. So what kind of steps did you have to take to actually become a coach? So you, here's the crazy thing that some people know and some don't. There aren't real steps that you have to take if you don't want to like go an official route. There, there aren't any regulations on the coaching industry. So you can literally just start. But I did get a coach. So I did go that route to get a coach to, you know, get me certified to be able to really know what I'm doing. So I started that route. But before that, I actually knew that I was helping people, which is what a coach is. A coach is a person that is able to pull things from others and take them on a path and take them where they need to go. So for me, it was more so in the beginning, basically, who needs help? And people started asking me, let me be honest. They were calling me, hey, you're doing this, you're doing that. Can you assist me? So years and years ago, I was, um, I've, all, I've been a trade show, um, CEO of a trade show that I created, oh my gosh, like 13 years ago. And when I started that trade show, it was a unique show called Extensions Expo. And it basically solved the problem of the black community needing to be able to come to one place and be able to learn hair extensions, hair replacement, and hair weaving techniques under one roof. So when I created that, um, it was huge. And people knew that I knew how to do it and they wanted help. 
So they started asking me, can you assist me with creating my own trade show, my own events and things like that? So I started assisting them and I had to create something. So I said, hey, listen, I'll work with you for a month and we'll get on a call for an hour, you know, every week. And this is that's how I started. And then I started helping salon owners because I was a salon owner. So it kind of started in that space. And then when I decided to put the shears down, I said, OK, you've been doing this, but you need more structure. So that's that was where I got the actual help and start it in another way yeah okay so with being a certified coach do you need a certification as a coach like you said that you don't need it but does it help if you have one um it sounds nice but there's no one that's going to say if you don't have any type of anything i'm not going to hire you i'm not going to work with you there's no one that's going to say that so it's, it's all a matter of what um, structure do you want to follow? Do you want to follow someone's plan? Do you want to do things a certain way? Or do you really just want to come outside and make sure that you can help people, start helping them, get the proof, tell people that you've helped others and carry on? So it, it goes either way. So I hear all these titles about coaches. You hear life coach, you hear business coach, uh, relationship coach. Is there really a difference or is it just them putting a spin on the title? <laughs> nice question. Yeah, they're, they're just titles, honestly. So in this arena, you can title yourself whatever you want to title yourself. Now, when we hear the word, when we hear life coach, it does represent more of the person's life and um, how they behave and how they interact with others to actually get things done. Then when you hear business, it more so represents, I'm going to help you with the structure or the startup or, or literally the structure of your business. Now for me, um, I am life and business. And I, I title myself that because what I've understood and learned over all of the years that I've been doing this, I tend to want to help people with business, but they have these blockages. There are these reasons why their businesses are not excelling because they are who they are. And they have these things that are going on, things that are happening in their lives that block them from getting to the bag. So until someone stops them and says, hey, let's get to the root of why you're actually not performing, they won't, they won't actually get to the next level. So for me, I'm looking at the person and I'm asking the engaging questions in regards to, well, what is going on and, you know, why do you think that you haven't done this particular thing and what's happening? And when they start to really open up, I get to understand that, OK, some of these things stem from years ago. Now, the things that go really far back, I don't touch them because if you had something that happened to you, I can't pull you out of that. So I'm going to suggest that you go to a different type of professional to get help in that space. But the things that I can help them with, like, um, you know, just literally everyday things like um, figuring out how you're going to structure your day to get things done. You have a family and you're trying to figure out how do you cook the food and um, get everything together so that you can handle your business, um, your physical fitness. Like, are you feeling sluggish? Like, do you have a plan to make make it where you get up every day? and help yourself to feel good, you know, those things. So they, they, they play a role. Okay. Okay. So how do you create a digital footprint as a coach? Oh, nice. Every coach does need to have it because a digital footprint is you putting your stake in the ground saying that this is who I am and this is what I have to offer. And literally it means a lot of things, honestly, but recording, what it is that you help people with so that you don't have to keep saying that same thing over and over and having the ability to do something else. So you can record something, um, let them purchase that. Then you can build multiple programs on top of that one thing. Cause I've done that over and over. So for instance, I, in my program, become a coach. They have to realize who they are. And then at some point they have to build upon themselves on their social media. But then there's a social media program that exists by itself. So am I going to shoot the social media content to help you to build your social media all over again? No, I'm going to pull it from that program. I'm going to drop it over here. I can sell the same thing twice. I could also pull things out of a program and sell it separately. 
So that is a, a part of your digital, your, your digital footprint. But it also means you actually setting yourself up to be able to say, this is who I am. This is where you find me. This is what I do. Um, this is how I help you. That's another form of a digital footprint as well. Okay. How do you, on a high end, how do you price your 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 services on a high end and all the way to a low end? How do you price your services? Pricing has to do with what type of transformation you're receiving. What is the value of it? What what are you actually doing to change their life and what what price tag can you potentially put on that? So if I help you with something more low level where I'm helping you with something very small, the price tag is going to be small. It's a very, very small transformation. I help you to do this one little thing. But when I begin to change your life and change your um, financial status, yeah, we, we got to put a, a bigger price tag on that. And that usually comes in the form of something that's more extensive. So if I am, so I'll just speak about what I do. So I help people to monetize their knowledge. So I'm going to help you to take what you know, package it up and make it look good so that people who encounter you understand that it is of value. So sometimes it's what you're giving, but it's also what it looks like as well. So if it doesn't look good, if it look like it's $5, then people are going to only think that's what they should pay you. So it does look like um, having a full-fledged program, being on the right platform. And for me, it's a platform that can collect the money for you. It can um, kick someone out if they don't make payments. It looks good. It's automated. It does things that um, you don't want to have to do physically yourself. So when you package yourself up that way, you can demand a higher ticket as well as what it is that you're doing for the person. All right. So do you uh, create custom packages for people to solve their problems or you have just a, a one size fits all? I have several programs. So I work with clients one to one. Those who don't want to hop into a program, they want they want to move fast they want to be by themselves. I work with them one to one. So they come in and we work for eight weeks, one hour every week. I give them um, their homework. It's basically what we discuss that they need to do. And then we follow up every week. So that's one type of, um, of a method of helping them. Then there's the strategy call. So it's a person who says, I'm actually moving. I don't really want to get into a program. I don't want a long, um, you know, I don't want to be with you for a long time. I just need a literally a, a plan, a strategy. So there's the strategy call for an hour. So that is very intense. And it requires me to know a little bit about you before we get on the call, because it's like rapid fire. Then there's the programs and the programs come in different forms. So kind of a follow up to the first question. Um, this program I have called UBG. It is for social media, it's for networking of uh, entrepreneurs, and it's also goal setting. But it's more low level because everyone that comes in, they're going to write their goals down and we're not getting into a deep discussion about everyone's goals. I'm not um, going deep dive, as I said, but then um, I'm also sharing lessons on certain things. Here's a social media lesson. Go off and do it. There's not a lot of, oh, hey, did you do the homework? Did you do this? It's more of them watching. But when we get into another program, which is the Become a Coach, which has some of those components, it's more deeper. It's a smaller group, and I'm providing more of a transformation. I'm back and forth with them. Hey, did you do this? How is it going? Tell me how it's going. And then, and then there um, are higher level exercises that they're doing. So the price tag is different and yeah, that's how it works. Now here is what happens in some of these programs, which is really cool. They're in the program. And then when they need more help, they say, Hey coach, I'm raising my hand. Now I want to go private because I've been in here, whether it's a low level program or even a higher level program, I need more private help. I want a fast track. So they could literally move around in the programs in different ways, which is what we call an ascension ladder. Like we know there's a progression that could happen, but they literally could be in this program and need the other one. So that's the beauty. And um, I also have another higher level program other than the ones I was talking about, which means 
you move in this Become a Coach program, you get in here, it's only 30 days, but you need more help. And you want me for eight months and you're going to slowly move on and you're going to get more private help with me in this group coaching program. So, yeah, that's how it goes. Okay. Okay. So how do you find your clients? Okay. Finding clients is difficult for a lot of coaches because it is finding them, but it's also basically letting them find you. So for the most part, it's them finding me. So I have to show up places like your podcast here and be here, you know, let people know what I do, talk about how it works and talk about how I help others for people to be attracted. So it's really about client attraction. Social media is showing up on my own platform, being there, sharing with people what they need to know, um, expelling myths, giving them pieces of information, um, even doing sometimes I do these lives where they can get on and ask questions, help people. So when people see that they can actually get the help and that the coach actually knows what they're talking about, that's where the client attraction happens. Another way to get clients is after they've seen you, you move them to another platform like a webinar or a private um, call and they get to see more about who you are and they begin to make a decision that they want to move closer. So those are some of the things that are um, what helps a coach to actually get a client. OK, so do you recommend that everyone have a coach of some sort in their life? I do. I do. And nine times out of 10, um, people need multiple coaches for different reasons. And, you know, we're hearing a lot about like just the mindset coaches. I, I do do a little, lot of mindset. I don't consider myself to be just that. But some people do need the mindset coach because the way that people were brought up, the things that have occurred in their lives, um, they can't even move out of the space of they're not even sure if they can do what they want to do. So some people need just that. Um, and then let's think about physical fitness. Your, your trainer is a coach. They may or may not call themselves a coach, but they're literally helping you with your physical fitness. So there are many different types of coaches that people need. Now, when you're looking to um, fix your credit, you might find a, a credit coach that is going to basically, this is all I do. I'm going to help you get your money right going to help you to understand you raising your hand over there. I feel you. No, yeah. my God, Kurt. He's, <laughs> he's, he's Curtis. Curtis. Oh, Curtis. Right. Okay, right, right. I do know about Curtis and what he does. Yeah, so absolutely. So he knows what I'm talking about and people come to him for specifically what he helps them with. When they walk away from him, they can go because now they've got, got their credit together. They're able to now get more funding and they can go build the business they want to build. So they may need him alone. So that's where you need different coaches. And so what's some difficulties that you didn't think you would encounter uh, with your clients that you've been through? It would be the question I was just asked about getting clients. It is, it's a space that's tough for a lot of coaches. You have to learn how to do that. And until I actually got a coach that could teach me how to close I was totally doing it wrong. Now, let me tell you, I was closing clients. I was getting clients from the very beginning. I got clients off of my own merit. People knew what I could do for them. So by the time they got on a call with me, it was more so, I, I, I've been watching you. I know you can help me. I just want to know in what way that you say that you can help me and how much does it cost? But when you meet people who don't really know you, they're just meeting you, you know, recently. They don't know everything. They're attracted in some way because they have to make a, a choice to click that button to get on that call with you. But what you do on that call to close them is um, it, their strategy to it. So until I learned that, I, let me tell y'all, originally I had these questions I would ask people when I got on a call with them. And they were, they were great questions. They helped me to learn about the person. But what I learned about the discovery call and the closing of a client, I'm literally supposed to just find out what is it that you have an issue with. Let you know in that moment how I can assist you with that thing and then ask you if you're ready to move forward. It's literally that simple. And there's a few other words, verbiage that you have to say, but it's that simple. But I didn't know that. So you have to learn how to do that. 
So it was a slower process of getting clients before I understood how to close. And guess what? I'm still, I'm going to a conference next month on closing. Oh, wow. Because I believe that there's more that I need to know. So even when you believe that you've gotten the strategy, the understanding of how to do things, there's still more to learn. I want to close. We, we can always learn. 90%, right? Not 30 or 40 or 50, you know? <laughs> okay. So on the flip side, me being a client, what, what do you suggest I look for when I'm looking for a coach? All right. You, you should look for the person that can solve your biggest problem. The thing that keeps you up at night. You're looking for someone who can help you to, to fast track your progress through that. And I think what we need to do is look at what the biggest problem is, because we may have five problems. I mean, your money not might not be right. Your mindset is not right. You want to create a program. You don't know what you need to get started. Where What's the biggest problem that you need to solve first? Go find that person, work with them, and then move forward. Now, if you can simultaneously work with coaches and you have the capacity to do so, you may be able to work with two, but I wouldn't suggest you work with more than two because working with too many coaches, is, it's just too many. What do they call that? Too many irons in the fire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. So these are some business questions we want to um, bring up. We we heard you say you have a, a coach that you go to. So did you start an LLC or an S Corp? And if you did, is it in a trust? Okay. LLC and no trust. I'm still studying the trust thing and I began to learn more about it and it does cost some money to actually get that done. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was, I haven't done that part yet. Yeah. So you, you also talked about you having a coach, right? Like um, why is it important for us to have a coach as a business owner? Because um, you just don't know everything and there's someone who has already done it. They understand the process. Um, they also understand what could potentially go wrong. Um, they can also help you when things go wrong. And, and I was talking earlier about that program I have that's eight months. The reason why coaches have like a shorter program and a longer one is because we're able to help people immediately. But then there are there are things that occur in the business that you're in that um, on a like down the road, things are going to change. Uh, things are going to continuously happen that you're going to need assistance with. So even though you thought, oh, I got the blueprint, I understand what I need to do. But what about as your business grows and you need more assistance? Yeah. So on, on along, well, kind of along that same line, like, you know, when, when you got started, did you do like market research or um, uh, create a business plan? Okay, so... I've been in business for years. I've been in business since I was a teenager. So me starting business, it, it's just been like an ongoing thing. But if you're asking me about when I got to the part of, of being a coach, yes, I did need to do market research because it was a total different space. I come from the beauty industry. So I was over there servicing clients, doing the salon thing, educating and all of those things. But when I moved over here, it was like, oh, my goodness, I have to start all over like this is another world. So what I started doing and this is so let me share it from this perspective. When I help others, I'm helping them from the space that I of the the things I had to get through. So mm -hmm. in my program, I'm like, you got to do all of these things because I had to do these things. So I had to start to research all of the coaches that were helping people the way I wanted to help people. So I started typing in different keywords to see who popped up that I could see how what they do, how they do it, what do they charge, um, what types of things do they do, what do their graphics look like, what how do they show up on social media, what does their website look like, um, do they show their prices, um, are they open with um, helping people, do they have like walls where people can't get through before seeing certain things. I had to I had to do that market research. Yeah. OK, so when when you say market research and you're talking about that, so are you paying attention to what other coaches are doing and how does that affect you and your business? Yeah, um, I definitely 
paid attention then and I still pay attention now. So even though I'm in a great position right now, I still need to see those who are doing more on a higher level. What do what do they do and how do they do it? I'm even doing things like um, searching what their ads look like. So, you know, there are places that we can go to. We can type in certain things on the Internet and we can see how their ads are performing, because if I'm going to run an ad, I don't need to just blindly do it, which is what I did initially, to be honest. But then when you start getting into different coaching programs, like I'm in a program with um, someone for Facebook ads. So now I need to understand that arena as well. So there's like so much to know. That syndrome, um, what is it called? The syndrome where you are looking at other people. Oh, happy cat syndrome. Paralysis of analysis. Oh, no, I, not I, that I one. Can't, I can't think of the word, but it's where you're looking at others. And you begin to get nervous because you're like, I don't know if I measure imposter. Up. Imposter. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that is the one thing when you are doing market research that you have to be careful of because you could potentially look at these other people and you're like, oh my God, how can I measure up to them? So mm -hmm. what I say is that you have to do it. You have to see what they're doing and you got to do as much as you can to get as close as possible. But you have to understand that there's a process for you to actually go through before you can get there. So that's how you can alleviate it. If if anybody wanted to know how do you get over imposter syndrome yeah. while doing market research? <laughs> OK, so um, what's your why? What makes you do what you do? My why is I realized from a long time ago that I'm literally a funnel and I'm on a mission to help others who don't understand how to do the thing. So I realized a long time ago that God put me on this earth to help people. So when I'm going through something, when something happens to me or, or for me, that it's happening for me to be able to help someone else. So now anytime something happens, my why is that I'm here to experience it to understand how to get through it, to help someone through it. All right, cool. Yeah. So, so do you have an affiliate program for your courses, like for other people that's trying to get into business and make money some type of way to where they can actually sell your courses for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I decided to choose a platform that would make that easy for me. And um, all of the programs that I, that I offer, it's a click of a button. So I give them this link, anyone who wants it, if any of you want it, <laughs> I give the link and literally the person clicks on it, they sign up, I have to approve them. And then my system can send them payments automatically. And I have it set up where, because a lot of the programs I have there, some of them are ongoing where people are in a membership, sign up today. So I don't only pay out for today for the sign up, I pay out for the person that stays in the program, but the commission is lower as time goes on. But yeah, it just totally makes sense. I mean, like I'm an Amazon affiliate as well. And I'm like, if these large companies are doing it, I can't dismiss the fact yeah. that I need to do it for my company too. Yeah, no, we definitely want a link and we're going to put it in the show notes and we're going to share it and try to bring some business your way. Awesome. Okay, so with this, with your program, right, and your coaches, how do you talk a little bit about your coaches and the program that you guys have? Uh, the Become a Coach program is to help a person. So they walk in, they know that they want to help others, but they haven't done anything yet. My goal is to make sure that they see themselves for who they really are before they move forward. So once they walk through this process of who am I, what do I really have to offer, where are my blocks, now they know how they can build their coaching program out. A lot of people skip this. People are just saying, oh, I want to have a program. So I have a deep dive on that. And me being an author of a book called You Got Way More In You, Where Is It? We walk through some of the things that's in that book. And in my program, we're going through that so that they can see themselves. And now we take that info and that becomes the content of their program. Because guess what? They're helping someone from a space where they just came from. They just got over something. So now you can't dismiss the fact that something happened to you and you figured out how to get through it. That has to be in your program. 
So that's what I do for them. Now, the coaches that are that join my program, they actually are doing a lot of different things. Someone may be doing a program where they're helping people to get through trauma. Someone, uh, one recent person is helping people to understand their children um, and how to really create like the culture in the house so that things are cohesive in the house. Um, there's there's other people who are in the beauty industry. They want to teach people how to do a technique. Mm -hmm. But they had to get through it. So what did you really have to overcome? And what are we putting in this program? You know, really? I help people with the technology, too, because you know what? That's a, a, a space where a lot of people have issues. So mm -hmm. I took the liberty of dropping um, content inside of the program that they mm -hmm. watch. So if they want to learn how to video edit, mm -hmm. they don't have to go somewhere else. There's a lesson in there shows mm -hmm. you how to do it. Yeah. And I have the content that is dripped. They they see one thing at a time. Was it a time that you yeah. think it wasn't going to all work? That it wasn't going to work? Mm-hmm. Mm. No, I didn't. No, no. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because my brain won't tell me. My brain won't allow me to have that talk with myself that it's not going to work. Because once I commit myself to doing something, I'm, I'm actually only moving forward because I believe that it's going to happen and that it's going to work. If you're asking me from the space of was there a day where it was like, oh, my gosh, I'm here. Where are my clients? What's going on? Should I keep going? I've had those moments where I had the thought of, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. But did I say that it's not going to work? No, okay. I wasn't able to do that. Mm -mm. OK, so now we got to the rapid fire question. So. Um, what, what's the most important thing you've learned in life? That believe people when they say what they say, believe, believe who's in front of you, believe their actions and believe what they just said that came out of their mouth. If you had to go back and talk to your 18 year old self, what's something you would tell yourself? Learn about how money works right now. Yeah. Okay. If you can sit down and talk with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? It's got to be Oprah. It's got to be Oprah. This is rapid fire, so I won't say why, but... <laughs> That's the question, though. Why? Because she's amazing. She's overcome so many different things, and she kept going, and she's a multimillionaire. Tell me what you, what you experienced, and how did you get here? I'm willing to listen, Oprah. I'm turning my phone off, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, people always say, you know, you should save money, invest. You know, what are some things that you invest in? Myself. Oh, that's I'm good. going to a conference in, a, in next month. I'm, when I get off with you guys, I'm signing up for a conference in Vegas on sales. The, the thing is, figure out what you don't Determine what you don't know. And go get the answers because you can't keep making excuses. What's one tool you use in your business that makes everything run smooth or makes it easier? Kartra. I love Kartra. And yeah, Kartra. It's a, it's a CRM system. It brings everything together for me. I talk to all my clients, do all the things in there, get my money. <laughs> okay. If you had to recommend one book, what book would that be? Why y'all do this to me? Why? But I'm going to say um, how to win friends and influence people because we're not on this earth by ourselves. And if you don't understand how to connect with others and how to interact with them, you're not going to be able to get to the next level because you can't do everything by yourself. Communication is everything. What's your best tip for making our community a better place? Make connections with like-minded people and build. Do something now. Don't wait. All right. How do you balance work life and family life? You, I must. <laughs> I exercise on a consistent basis. I promise myself to call my family throughout the week several times. And I write out how and what I need to do for my business and I use these cards and I just check off what hasn't been done and get it done. Okay. So tell me, how do you celebrate your wins? 
a glass of wine. I go to the beach and um, I just, you know, kick my feet up and I just, I just say, girl, you did that. And what are you going to do next? <laughs> right. And the last one, where can people find you? CoachTamikaJames.com. Coach Tamika James on IG. Tamika James on IG. Those are my main places. All right. That's cool. Hey, so one way we like to celebrate and we just want to throw it out there for the people as well, is that we try to do something that we normally don't do, almost like a bucket list item, right? So something <laughs> we all did together was we went to Las Vegas and took us a helicopter ride, right? So we rolled over the city, uh, had a good time, and, and then we thought about doing it next. And then that next project, we can't wait to get done so we can do it again, right? Yeah, we want to have another celebration come up. We also did, um, we went out there to San Pedro, when Butterfly flew out and we took some time just to peer over the coast. We did some shooting out there, just just enjoying life, you know, as a team. We, we don't realize how important people are until we almost lose them or something goes wrong. So let's enjoy life now and, and be in the moment. All right, cool. Hey, so Tamika, before we close out, what's one thing you'll leave the people with, uh, some little, a little inspiration? Hmm. I would love for people to know that um, you have to be the person that has to have belief in yourself. You have to make a choice on what you want, and then you have to believe that you can actually have it. You have to have conversations with yourself on a consistent basis. And I always talk about when you don't have what you want because you're not there yet, I want you to write that you're not there and that you don't have what you want. And then right below it, turn it into an affirmation and write it as if it has already happened and then flip the page, fold it and only read the affirmations part because it's about to happen. It's happened over and over for me and you just have to believe it, write it out and then really continue continuously read it. And it is, it's, it's happening guys. That new life that you know that you're supposed to have, it's coming. You just got to believe it. All right, cool. Hey, Rhonda, why don't you leave the people with something before we get out of here? Man, how do I follow up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, believe in yourself. Don't give up. No matter what it is, just don't give up. All right, Trash, talk to me. Leave the people with something, my brother. Coach, we really, really appreciate what you do. I've seen some of the conversation with the women that you had. I've watched your lives. I see some of the work you do. You do phenomenal work. And we just appreciate you for what you do for our community. And we just want to inspire you and make sure we're motivating we're supporting you on everything you do and we keep this thing going all right you guys i'm gonna say um hey you guys go follow tamika uh make sure if you need a coach get with tamika and let her coach you through your business because that's what's something we believe in um also want to say you guys we got problems and we also have solutions and we are from the team at crc empire we want to thank you for listening to stay connected with us, like, share, and subscribe to the We Got Problems podcast. You can find us on social media platforms at Curtis Martin 247, at Rhonda Wright's Official, and at the underscore trash underscore vegan underscore. We got problems and we got solutions.